Hello, my name is Paul Jones. I'd like to talk you through the highlights of our paper entitled Interpreting Patient Reported Outcomes, or PROs, from Clinical Trials in COPD. In this paper, we posed a series of questions to consider when reviewing treatment efficacy as assessed by PROs. We focused on the SGRQ, or St. George's Respiratory Questionnaire, as a PRO, but the principles apply equally to other symptom-based questionnaires. First, how do we judge the size of a PRO benefit? Because in isolation, a PRO score may mean very little, and statistical significance does not necessarily imply clinical relevance. And this is why the concept of the minimum clinically important difference, or MCID, was developed, to set PRO data into context. With the SGRQ, the MCID is four units. Now let's look at how PRO data from clinical trials are reported. The traditional approach has been to express treatment benefit as a mean change. But that means that if the mean change is less than the MCID, so for example, an SGRQ of three units, people have concluded that the treatment did not produce a clinically worthwhile benefit. But there's a disadvantage to that approach, as I'll illustrate. PRO scores are usually normally distributed. So for the mean improvement in a study population to exceed the MCID, more than half of the patients must improve by at least that amount. That's a very challenging target in COPD, and I'd like to illustrate to you how mean scores mask benefits seen in individual patients. Here are data from a theoretical trial with data about the PRO improvement. On average, there was a mean improvement, but you can see that the mean improvement was a little bit less than the minimum clinically important improvement. But we still see that about a third of patients be improved by more than the MCID. So now let's look to see how a responder analysis is carried out. Here's a comparative treatment which, on average, produced no change in PRO score. If we now look at treatment A, we see that above the MCID, proportionately more patients improved with treatment A than with the comparator treatment B. So now we have all the information we need to present the data. And here I'm showing you hypothetical SGRQ data from a hypothetical trial comparing placebo with three bronchodilators. First, we can look at the change from baseline in SGRQ score and see that, as in many clinical trials, even the placebo-treated patients improved. So we have to subtract the placebo-treated data, data from the bronchodilator-treated patients. And now we can do the responder analysis and see that about a third of patients given placebo responded. But what we need to know is what is the additional benefit from the active treatments. And the way this is presented is to calculate that the odds ratio or for a response with the active treatment compared with placebo. And you can see in this case that we hypothesize that the dual bronchodilator would have a two and a half times greater odds of benefit compared with placebo. And finally, we can even calculate the additional number of patients in 100 patients treated who would benefit from active treatment compared with placebo. Thus, we see that PRO data may be reported in a number of different ways. Each may have its own advantages, but perhaps a responder analysis may be the most valuable because it can provide a useful answer to the practicing clinician, which is, well, based on the results of this trial, what are the odds of the patient sitting in front of me having a worthwhile benefit with this treatment rather than another? Well, I hope you found this little video helpful and thank you very much for watching.